If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this problem is to note that after a long period of time, the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to the voltage across the resistor marked R2. And the reason that the voltage across the capacitor and the voltage across the resistor R2 will be the same after a long period of time is because these two circuit elements are in parallel with one another. So again, our goal becomes to find the voltage across R2, which is equal to the voltage across the capacitor. Now, we can mark the voltage across R2 as V2. And in order to solve for V2, what we want to remember is that Ohm's law tells us that voltage and resistance are proportional to one another. So we could write out the following proportion involving the voltage across R2 and the voltage across R1. Here is that proportion. This is just another way of writing the fact that the voltage is proportional to the resistance. So that would be true for resistor 1 as well as resistor 2. Now, it is also true that after the switch has been closed for a long time, the voltage across resistor 1 plus the voltage across resistor 2 must equal the total voltage supplied by the battery. In other words, we can write V1 plus V2 is equal to the EMF of the battery. Now, what we're going to do is solve this equation for V1 by subtracting V2. We'll take this result for V1 and we'll substitute it into our proportion. We will next make it our goal to solve for V2, which is what we had stated originally was our plan. And maybe to solve for V2, we can cross multiply. We could then distribute R2 into the parentheses. We can add the term V2 R2 over to the left hand side. Since we have a factor of V2 in each term, we can factor it out. And finally, we can divide by the term R1 plus R2 in order to isolate V2. Now that we have this expression for V2, we can substitute in the known values. Recall that the EMF of the battery is given to us as 20 volts, R2 is given to us as 15 kilo ohms, and R1 is 10 kilo ohms. So let's substitute in those values so we can solve for V2. And when you calculate this, you should get a value of V2 of exactly 12 volts. So this would be the voltage across resistor 2 after the switch has been closed for a long period of time. Remember, we said that the voltage across V2 will be the same as the voltage across the capacitor because they are in parallel with one another. So we can now say that Vc, or the voltage across the capacitor, is also going to be 12 volts after this switch has been closed for a long time. Now, as we will see, knowing the voltage across the capacitor will help us calculate the current that's flowing through resistor two. So that's our next step. Now, we recall that after the switch was closed for a long period of time, it is then suddenly opened. And what's going to happen is that the capacitor will discharge. So in essence, the circuit looks like the following. Notice that when the switch is opened, we are excluding resistor R1 because it is now no longer part of the complete circuit. And next, we need to consider the equation that governs the discharging of the capacitor. So in this equation, we have the charge at a particular time denoted by Q, the original charge in the capacitor, and then the time and the resistance of the resistor. Now what we'll do is multiply both sides of this equation by the capacitance C. So we'll do it here as well as here. Let's recall that Q times C is just equal to the voltage. And then Q naught times C would equal the initial voltage. And then the rest of the equation follows. Now we've determined that the initial voltage at, on the capacitor is the 12 volts. Recall that's the number of volts that developed after the switch was closed for a long period of time. The moment that we throw the switch open, that's still how many volts are initially present on the capacitor. So we'll go ahead and plug in 12 volts for the initial voltage on the capacitor. The resistance will use R2, 
the capacitance is known, and then the time is stated in the question as 4 milliseconds. Notice that we converted all values to their standard units. When we compute this, we should get approximately 6.16 volts. This is the voltage acting across the capacitor after a period of time of 4 milliseconds. Finally, now that we have that voltage, we can calculate the current that's flowing through resistor 2. We know that current is simply equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So we'll plug in the voltage supplied by the discharging capacitor and divide it by the resistance. Remember, we're using the value of R2. So we'll divide by 15,000 ohms. And we get approximately 4.11 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. And this would be the correct answer to part A. For part B, we're being asked to calculate the rate at which the current is changing. Symbolically, the question is asking us to calculate dI dt. Again, that would be the rate at which the current is changing with respect to time. And to solve for that, we can use the following equation, which is derived in this chapter, and it relates the current to the original charge on the capacitor the resistance and the capacitance as well as time. This again is an equation for a discharging capacitor and it basically shows us that over time the current is exponentially decreasing. Now to solve for di dt we're going to take the derivative with respect to time on both sides of the equation. So the left side will simply become di dt. The right side obviously is a little more tricky. We have a constant multiple in front of the exponential term so we just retain that constant multiple. When taking the derivative of an exponential, we simply recopy the exponential expression, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of the exponent with respect to time. Now the exponent is negative t over rc. That can be thought of as negative 1 over rc times t. So if we're taking the derivative of this term with respect to time, the value of the derivative would just be negative 1 over rc. Now this equation will allow us to solve for di dt, but we might want to note that q0, which is the original charge on the capacitor, can be set equal to the capacitance times the initial voltage on the capacitor. So let's make that substitution. Now after making that substitution, we'll notice we can cancel the capacitance since it appears in both the numerator and denominator. And then at this point, we can plug in all the known values. Remember, the initial voltage across the capacitor we found earlier to be 12 volts. We have the time, we have the resistance, which again is 15,000 ohms, R2. And then we also have the capacitance, so let's just plug everything in. And after carefully computing that, we should get negative 0.068 as the magnitude and then for the unit we have current over time so that's going to be amps per second so this would be the correct answer to part B finally to part C which asks the rate at which the dissipation rate is changing dissipation rate is power so when they ask for the rate at which the power is changing what they're asking for is dp dt now we know that power is equal to current squared times resistance. What we can do is take the derivative with respect to time on both sides of this equation. So the left side would become dp dt. We could use the product rule on the right side if we wish. So it would be the first term times the derivative of the second term. Now the derivative of the resistance would be zero because it's a constant, plus the second term times the derivative of the first term. Remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to time, so we're going to end up with 2i multiplied by di dt. This term will cancel. We can plug in the resistance. We know the current from part A of the question, and then we just figured out di dt. And when we process that, we should get approximately negative 0.845 as the magnitude and then the unit here since we have power over time that's going to be watts per second so this would be the correct answer to part c thanks for watching the video if you liked it please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and i'll do my best to post an answer to it on youtube